Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword may be one of the more hand-holding Zelda games in the history of the franchise, but that doesn't mean its many, many tutorials will tell you absolutely everything that you need to know. With that in mind, here's a quick Skyward Sword beginner's guide full of tips that even Fee doesn't know. Or maybe she does and she just doesn't want to tell you. First off, let's start with the basic Universal Zelda tips that you probably already know, but just in case this is your first time with a Zelda game, make sure to catch the fairies in empty bottles so you can essentially give yourself an extra life when you lose all your hearts, break all the pots and cut all the grass when you find yourself low on resources, bomb all suspicious looking walls for hidden pieces of hearts, and so on and so forth. One thing that you'll learn quite early on in Skyward Sword is that you can collect 300 rupees fairly quickly. And once you hit that threshold, any rupees you collect after that might as well be thrown in the trash because they don't get added to any sort of rupee savings account. So make an investment early on and get a bigger wallet. You can get a small wallet from Beetle Shop for the reasonable price of 100 rupees, but the big wallets that increase your max rupees by a lot can only be obtained by completing side quests and turning in your gratitude crystals to Betro. We'll get to him later. Unless you know exactly what you're getting from a goddess chest, like, I don't know, maybe you're using one of the great guides we have over on IGN.com, you don't want to open goddess chests with a full pouch of rupees. Like I said, any rupees that get beyond what you can currently carry are completely wasted, and many of the rewards you'll find in these goddess chests are valuable silver and gold rupees that can net you as many as 300 rupees all at once. Once you open a goddess chest and claim its reward, you can't open it again. So make sure not to waste those opportunities to become richer. It can be tempting to just jump right into a newly opened hole in the sky and explore the next region, but always make sure to make your rounds through Skyloft, Pumpkin Landing, Bamboo Island, and so on and so forth. Peruse the bazaar for new items, open goddess chests, etc. The rewards are almost always worth the effort. Along those lines, once you do complete a side quest, remember that you need to turn in your gratitude crystals to Betro, who is an NPC that appears after you complete the Lost Child side quest. You can start this mission right after completing the first major dungeon, and it is triggered by talking to Rhyna after you leave the courtyard in Skyloft. You'll bounce from Skyloft to the Lumpy Pumpkin and back again in order to discover a hidden entrance in the graveyard that will take you to Betro's hideout. Once you talk to him, every side quest you do after that will reward you with gratitude crystals that you can bring back to him for reward, like pieces of heart, larger wallets, and more. Skyward Strikes aren't just for activating fancy mechanisms. They're also a very valuable combat tool and a great way to initiate fights. They're powerful, can hit multiple targets at once, and are also a great way for dealing with things like beehives, crows, and other enemies that try to attack from a distance. One of the great things about Skyward Sword is that enemies can be defeated in a large number of ways. You can simply attack the openings in an enemy's guard, you could also wait for them to attack and hit them with a shield parry to stun them, you could send your beetle to cut the stem of a Deku Baba, you could feed a bomb to one of the gold Deku Babas, you could stab their stem, you can stun an enemy with a slingshot, the list just goes on and on. The point is, if any one method is giving you trouble, take a second to look at your inventory and experiment to see if anything else gives you an easier time. Enemies in Skyward Sword are deliberately designed to be able to block random wild sword attacks. Not to mention, you're probably just going to tire yourself out. If you're trying to force an opening in Bokoblin enemies, you typically can if you swing left and right in a steady rhythm. But if you're just swinging your sword all willy-nilly, you're going to get blocked more often than not. Bugs are everywhere in Skyward Sword, and if you buy yourself a net from Beetle Shop in Skyloft, you can catch them and turn them into a variety of potions by visiting Birdie in the Bazaar. Healing potions in particular are extremely valuable because while hearts aren't all that hard to come by, they have a bad habit of being nowhere in sight when you need them the most. And that should do it for a beginner's guide to Skyward Sword. Thanks for watching, and for more Skyward Sword HD, make sure to check out our full review along with our explainer of how the game works without motion controls. And for everything else, keep it here on IGN.